So guys, welcome back to RBR. And the last time you saw the E63, we had the full review of the facelift. And we found it to be a pretty exciting car, especially today when all the EU laws are trying to restrict the excitement of a brand new car, particularly with regards to sound. The E63S stood up pretty well. But throughout that review, I kept mentioning another car that might be a better option. And that was the amazing pre-facelift. So there was no way that we couldn't do a versus mode comparison of these two cars. That's what today's video is all about. We're gonna be comparing both the design of the pre-facelift versus the facelift, the interior, because again, there's big changes, and then performance and sound and see really, which is the best E63S for you to spend your money on. The conclusion may well be surprising, so let's dive straight in and compare both of these AMG E63Ss and see which one we prefer in the end. So guys, what has changed on the E63S? Well, technically, in terms of internals, not much. In terms of engines, in terms of power, in terms of the technical parts of the car, these are both identical. Where we were expecting the facelift to have a bit of hybrid assistance, like the new GLE 63S has with the starter generator, that doesn't exist in this. It is a pure combustion engine, same as this car. So in terms of performance, really, it's an even playing field between both of these. This car is a little bit more comfortable in terms of suspension. This one feels a lot more race car. And as you'll see later, sounds a lot more race car as well. But the main changes were really on the inside in terms of tech, which we'll explore in a minute, and then the visual changes on the outside. Here we have the pre-facelift. This is, of course, in edition one, almost identical to the one I used to have. Really miss it having seen this car. This has also got the carbon ceramics, which are lovely. And we also have the two different wheel options here, so you can see the difference here as well. But we're gonna focus first on the front ends. Let's look at the pre-facelift first. You've got the classic style of AMG grille, which was known as the twin bar grille. So this links back to our old C63, the old SL63, and it really harkens back to maybe the prime of AMG back in the day. And you'll see it's more of a smiley face front grille. But more than that, the thing that I like a lot about the pre-facelift is you still have the signature E-Class lights with the double bars, which you've lost now on the facelift because the facelift has the AMG GT style of eyebrow with the two dots inside. And you remember the dots now signify which model it is. Two dots means E-Class, one dot C-Class, three dots S-Class. And only Merc nerds are going to notice the difference. The layman, you won't really notice with the car coming up behind you. Lower front, I think it's really aggressive on the pre-facelift actually. Whereas initially I thought that this one was a bit more when I saw it fresh. When I look at this, and I'm going to compare both of them for you guys to have a look now, there's just something exceedingly muscular about the front end of the pre-facelift. I can't quite work out what it is. Is it the way the lights and the grill are shaped versus the lower air intakes? I'm not sure. When you look at the facelift, it is very AMG GT four door, isn't it? I mean, if you just look dead on, I could trick you into thinking that this was the GT63S, which is a good thing. If you really like that car, this then looks that much closer to it. And of course, the GTs are the flagships of AMG, but it is very soft compared to this. They both get the wider arches, they both get power dome bonnets. So the entire front sections of these cars from the A-pillars onwards are unique to the E63s but very rarely will you see such a massive divergence between pre-facelift and facelift. There's no right answer here. You might prefer this one, you might prefer this one, but these are just the changes that you have on the front. Right guys, rears. Again, big, big changes on the facelift. Look at the pre-facelift, unsurprisingly looks like S-Class, looks like C-Class. What was lovely about it was having the crystalline finish inside the rear lights. That was a real highlight for me. Your pipes weren't the typical 63 ones. They were what you would also find on the S65, so in the V12 versions, which helped the E63 stand out a little bit versus all the other AMGs. But you never got wide arches and there was nothing really much else to differentiate the AMG version to the standard diesel car. Facelift, much of the same in the sense that we haven't got the rear arches still. Much of the car is very similar to your standard E-Class, but there are some changes in terms of the pre-facelift. So now we have a new lower diffuser and bumper. We've got the more typical 63 style pipes, although these ones are in a new design. You'll see the kind of gashes within the pipes that make them look quite 
exciting. And of course, the highlight has to be the brand new lights. So these are two part lights now. These are again, they're in line with new S class, new C class, very easy to guess. Mercedes really wanting all of their saloons to look very similar. I really like this actually. I think almost the perfect car for me might be the rear of this one and the front of this one. But then in some angles, this actually looks not as aggressive as this, it's an odd one. Again, I'd love to know what you guys think. It's a really tough one, but what's great is that they're so different that they offer different things to the customer. That'll continue on on the drive later. Now, let's go inside because there's some big changes inside for the facelift and some things that'll draw you towards this car versus that one. Then we'll check out the sound and then on to performance. So guys, facelift. Main change that you're gonna notice as a layman coming in, steering wheel and the driver's own screens, etc. Steering wheel is a mixed bag for me. I love the AMG control units because they're a big improvement over the last ones that I was telling you, you can get in the pre-facelift. Those were a bit creaky, they weren't symmetrical and the designs in these ones inside are absolutely awesome. They're even more high fidelity in terms of resolution to my eyes and you've got like little textures within them now. So on the left hand side, I can see a hexagonal, very thin, you really have to squint to see it. I can see a hexagonal pattern within there, which makes it look so much better than a standard digital screen with just the necessary information. Here, AMG love to texture their screens and it's the same with the drive zone that I'll get onto in a minute. And it just makes it look that much better. Same with the screen on this side. This has got a dotted pattern, again, very slight. So because you can't quite perceive them, it gives a layering and a texture to the screens that make them look really good. Secondly, they're symmetrical, which is great. And you go through the driving modes, it is gorgeous. It looks fantastic. It's like you're in some kind of hypercar or something. Well impressed with these, really like them. I don't like the rest of the steering wheel. There's no 12 o'clock marker. The nine to three position is too thick and unwieldy. It does remind me of CLK Black Series and the cuts, but that's where the good points of that end. It's too thick and it, it makes the steering feel feel as if it's worse when it's not, they're the exact same system. Um, the airbag in the middle, again, it's too big for my eyes. It's not leather covered, that might help it. In the S-Class, it looked better. And then the swipe controls for things like cruise control and Distronic is a bad idea because it's hit or miss. It doesn't always work. And I felt the previous touch little buttons within the steering wheel just work better than these, just being completely honest with you. What is awesome, and you will miss in the preface lift, is these awesome shift paddles that are now bigger. They're kind of C-shaped. They're just very, very good. They're very, very nice to use on a daily basis. Then you've got the driver zone. I feel it's higher resolution. They've changed bits on it. Texturing, I think, typography a little bit, shadows, 3D elements of the text, especially like the, the number gear that you're in right in the middle in Super Sport Display. Everything just looks even better than it did before in the 35s or the 63s, particularly in Super Sports Display. And then, like in the past, you can change all the information on the left, all the information on the right, all the information in the middle. Mercedes and AMG really making full use of the digital screen aspect. It's not just a digital screen pretending to be an analog screen to save cost. You can really customize it to your own liking. And again, you can change, if you don't like Super Sport, you can change it to classic or understated, or the previous sport one. And again, customize those as you like it, which is great. Negative point, Where's the, where is the IWC clock? What are you doing, guys? It was a great feature. Now it just looks blank. I can't stick this in there, can I? That's not good. But then you have a great benefit. You have MBUX, the fantastic MBUX system, even in this previous version to S-Class or EQS. It's brilliant. It's head and shoulders above anything else on the market. It's better than what you'll find in the preface lift. You've got a touch screen here that thankfully you don't need to use because that's not safe in my opinion. You can use the touch trackpad here instead, which has got haptic feedback and tells you how much you've clicked, which is fantastic. Then you've also got touch on the steering wheel, which I said, it's a little bit hit or miss. Like I'm, I'm swiping down now and it wasn't working, um, but you can use that if you want. And then finally, you've got the excellent voice control system where you can, for example, change the ambient lighting with your voice and do all kinds of things like I showed in the previous review. And that's the one thing that you will really miss in the pre-facelift. Then the final bit of pre-facelift versus facelift has to be the seats. You can't get the AMG bucket seats, as I said. These are okay, you know, they're comfortable, but they don't hug you as well as you'll see later. And they just don't look as cool. 
And in a super saloon, that's gonna cost you, I don't know, 100 grand, looks are very, very important. Now, into the pre-face lift. Now, this is slightly unfair because this is the Edition 1, and the Edition 1 had a very special interior with black napper, yellow stitching, Dynamica. We had night black trims for the actual steering wheel. It all looks really quite smart in this car. But regardless, the general structure, same as the pre-face lift. Now, the first few things that you have to understand, there are some big changes. The benefit in the pre-face lift, you do get the option to have the AMG bucket seats, the awesome performance seats, the Recaros. You don't get those anymore in the facelift, which is, as I said, it's quite strange, isn't it? And another weird thing, you only get them if you don't get driving assistance package like lane assist and self-driving. So you have to weigh up either having the sports seats or having the driving assistance. Anyway, that's one thing to weigh up. So if you'd like the track bucket seats, which are actually very, very comfortable, don't let the bucket seat thing scare you, then you'd have to go for the pre-facelift. Other changes, of course, the steering wheel. This is the one that you find in the pre-facelift AMG GTR. Though with pre-facelift, halfway through its life, you did get the one that you find in the GT63 S as well. And I think you'll be able to even get the controls for the AMG drive unit on the steering wheel. There are ways to code it from what I understand. People are doing it now. So you could have the best of both worlds where you have what I think is the best steering wheel, which was the one in the GT63 S with the control units in this pre-facelift car. So that's a nice mix. Now, in terms of the driver zone, you have got three different display styles. It's not as extensive as the one in the new one, but I think it actually still looks really nice, particularly the fact that this one is completely unique to the E63. It's not shared across the board. Like our new car is shared with all the 35s, all the 45s, all the 43s, all the 63s. It's very incestuous, whereas this is kind of unique to this car. But of course, you haven't got MBUX. You've got the standard Mercedes system in this. So again, you kind of have to weigh this up. Is CarPlay in it? I can't actually remember whether CarPlay is in this, but as you've seen in my own personal car videos, you can install that later on without much bother at all. So with that, it kind of evens the playing field for me. I don't use the Mercedes operating system as much. Ambient lighting, etc., all exactly the same. Burmeister, all exactly the same. You haven't got the brilliant voice assistant of MBUX, and I think that is the thing that you're gonna miss the most. One other big difference inside. We've got the lovely IWC clock here. As I said, the other one was blank, wasn't it? And how good does that look? You just miss that so much. When you know it's meant to be there, you can't unsee this now. Once, it's, once you see that gap, that's it, it's such a shame. So if you have your heart set by the end of this review on a pre-face lift, my recommendations would be get the midlife steering wheel, try and get the control switches on it. You've got the best of both worlds, get the bucket seats because they look fantastic and they are super comfortable. Makes the whole thing look a bit more flagship AMG as well. But now the big difference, let's get onto the sound and compare both of these right now. Of course, this car has AMG Motion Start, unlike the Prefacer, which is always loud on this. You have to hold one of the paddles up before you press the start button. Then you get the loudest start up, as you can see. Now for the pre-facelift. Oh, that start up. There's no motion start here, you don't need it. You don't need it in this car. And it goes straight into race. Same GTR. So guys, I don't know how much you could tell on the microphones, but that was about 10 times louder. It sounded like an AMG GTR. Whereas this poor thing, it might have the aggressive grill, but the one that sounds like the GTR is that beast. And this difference is only compounded again when you go out and you drive them. 
and then you realise just how much EU laws and the OPF have affected what is otherwise a really fantastic car. Right guys, pre-facelift. Let's see what this is like. We're going to start with the launch control. <laughs> oh my God, what a monster. Listen to that. Wow. What a difference. I'm saying what a difference, obviously, because I've driven the other one in the previous review. It's been a while since I've driven one of these. I've driven so many new cars, and of course all new cars are subject to newer EU regulations, etc. So they all have to be quiet, they can't have pops and bangs, etc. So you get lulled into a false sense of, oh, this doesn't sound that bad. But then when you drive something that actually sounded phenomenal, only then are you reminded what a car that sounds good is actually like. And bloody hell, this sounds good. So track face has pegged this car at 3.2 seconds, which is what we found the facelift to do on our main review as well. So as we said, no real difference in terms of performance, certainly not in straight line performance. What I love in this car, I, I missed it so much in the facelift, is how nice the steering wheel is. It's nice and thin. It just feels better to me. sound this is what a super saloon is all about it's all about this drama why would you pick a petrol super saloon against something fantastic like a Taycan that's the question I'm asking myself these days and this this noise this noise is the reason now look I can make it do whatever I want on demand it's like having machine gun fire now, of course, the comparison is going to be quite unfair because this is non-OPF versus that car, which has not only got the OPF, but it's subject to all the other EU regs that have come in in the four to five years since this car came out. So the facelift, sadly, it's not going to sound anything like this. Now, let's head back to the facelift car, show you the launch of that, and show you initially what the exhaust sounds like compared to this one. Right guys, now the facelift, let's see how it fares on launch control as well. Zero to 60 was once again 3.2 seconds, so cars are mechanically identical essentially. Um, in Sport Plus at the moment, what are you hearing sound wise? So of course this is a lot more muted. You still do get sound within the interior. It's being pumped in from the engine bay through the speaker, so it's live sound, it's not fake. Revs are nice. So you can still get some pops and bangs out of it, which you just can't on the rivals. But look, even when you stop the car, you do get some nice pops and bangs, which you just don't find in its rivals anymore. So while we're being harsh on this car, rest assured that the E63S is one of the best in terms of dealing with those problems while still having a nice soundtrack. The speed of the two cars is nigh identical, okay? You feel like you're going faster in the pre face lift because of the sound, but this sounds good at full chat as well. And if you look at the flyby sound, again, they're both pretty good, of course the other one much louder, but in terms of sound quality, this car does pretty well. Good. What you don't get is the really large bangs and pops, which some people don't actually like. Me, I love them because they remind me of the AMG GT family, which is kind of ironic because this one does not remind you of it in terms of sound, it reminds you of it in terms of that face. And this is what you miss then in that car, as you saw, um, it adds so much in terms of drama. It makes the car feel faster, even though it's not. They're both identical. Do I miss AMG Dynamics? I don't think we're doing the type of driving where you would in this case. That is much more to do with track-focused driving. So again, daily driving, that's not really going to be in there. Handling, steering, both identical. 
really, really good. So much better than BMW is offering in the M5. The steering especially is fantastic. I do feel you have a bit more body roll on the E-Class. I think the M5 was a bit more planted, the chassis was a bit more rigid. I like the way that car felt on steeper bankings, sharper corners. But the steering on the E-Class is so much better that it makes up for it easily. Both pre-facelift and facelift are equal in that regard. Where they're not equal is, let's go into comfort mode. And I'll put the exhaust back on because exhaust on or else. The suspension on the pre-facelift is a little bit harsher. Okay, I'm not gonna say it's massively harsher because I was expecting to jump into the facelift and see this huge change between the two of them because that was the main thing that AMG said that they changed. I didn't really feel that there was a massive change. I still think the M5 is a more comfortable car than both. Um, the M5 competition does a very good job on the comfort side this time as well, borrowing parts from the M8. Our facelift, well, let me show you now. So, suspension on this, if I knock it back now into comfort mode, exhaust on, it's a little bit better. It, it is a little bit better. I'm not saying it's massively better. You find it more when you don't get the harsh and jerky rebound from the suspension, I feel. It's not jarring. It is still very stiff. I personally like that because I find you've got a bit more play in terms of the body roll in the E63 versus something like the M5, whereas the steering is the great equalizer on the E63. And I think a bit of that road feel that you get through the steering wheel, a bit of that harshness isn't a bad thing. Handling is fantastic. Steering is so lovely. I don't like the steering wheel on the face. That I think it's too fat, I think it's too unruly. Almost makes the steering feel, you know, less communicative than the preface, which is bizarre because obviously, you know, it's the same setup. But sometimes steering wheel shape can really help. So if you were a little bit put off by the E63 in terms of the suspension being too harsh in the preface lift, this one, I think it's five to 10% better. You do feel it, particularly in worse road conditions, which of course you find all over the UK. So this car is a little bit worse than that. Um, undoubtedly the facelift, easier to live with in that regard. I think overall it's a more comfortable and luxurious experience in the facelift. So really you're going to have to weigh this up. Do you want a car that is undoubtedly better inside in terms of technology, in terms of certainly a newer steering wheel, whether you like it or not, is down to you. And then of course, the updated design, which I absolutely love from the rear. From the front, undoubtedly it's more AMG flagship linking to the GTs. To be fair, out of the modern AMGs, if you wanna buy a new one, this one is probably the best and the truest to the spirit of AMG right now. Or do you want something that's a bit more old school? Do you throw away the idea of having the best tech in order to put the car into race mode? and really just have a shit ton of fun and all that AMG emotion out of essentially the same car basis. My buying history dictates the latter. I would go for this car, the pre-facelift D63. Doesn't have to be an edition one, mechanically identical to the normal car. This is a stock exhaust, whether you can believe that or not. For me, I think this is the one to have. I would upgrade the steering wheel, as I said, the exhaust you don't need to do anything to you could do something to it to make it even louder but i think it would just be unruly and i think it actually looks the more muscular of the two bizarrely but i would be lying if i said that if i bought the pre-facelift and i saw a facelift with all those external changes and the mbux that i wouldn't be exceedingly envious of that car and i'd be thinking of ways to upgrade my car to make it like that so both cars fantastic amg offerings amg really proving with the facelift that they can still make an exciting sounding car whereas the m5 and the rs6 etc sound rubbish in this day and age the e63 still maintains some of this emotion and in the pre-facelift of course the king is still the king the e63 as was the best and in my opinion it still is so guys if you've enjoyed this comparison between the two in this versus mode episode please do like and subscribe to our vr really hunter channel and i'm gonna have one more lap in this brutal beast see you next time